Hello and welcome back to the last tutorial in our little uh, sponges grouping. So we have the super soaker soaking up a massive amount of oceans, clearing out your ocean monuments with ease, and then we also had the lava slurper being able to clear out your nether, and now we have the most powerful, the most amazing block absorber. Now this you're going to be able to tell how many, what exact blocks you want to be able to have sucked, and we're also going to do drop stacks, which is able to, going to do the automatic loot tables, which I'm going to show you how to do for coal ore, iron ore, diamond ore, all the, basically the ore types, and then we're going to show you how to make massive holes like this one uh, with just one block, simply uh, limitations to your computer's tiers, but still possible. So with that in mind, let's get cracking. All right, so to get started with this one, we're going to be making the uh, block absorber. This is completely customizable for what we're doing the ore sponge. So let us, uh, let's take our lava slurper here, and then we can control V. And then we're going to call this the block, oops, all caps, block, uh, so RP, no, burr, absorber. And then call it again, block absorber, BR. And then uh, we're, just for now, we're to call this block so that I'll know if I forget about it. All right, and then finally, we're going to make a new class, and we're going to call this the block. Uh, actually, why don't we call this the the um, the ore sponge, because that's what it eventually is going to be being put as, S-P-O-N-G-E, sponge. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our lava slurper, because this is the compressed code, and we're just going to copy this, control C, into our ore sponge. And then there are a couple of changes uh, that we're going to be making. So let's take our ore sponge. And so now this soaks up uh, lava. But I don't want it to soak up lava. I want it to suck up a block. And to do that, this is basically, what am I, what am I sucking? What is the block turning into? And what after it's being sucked am I turning into? So just for functionality, because this is the fun video, uh, let's talk about just the uh, interchanges. So let's say, first off, I don't want this to be get fluid state. I want this to be get uh, block state of the current position. So basically, uh, instead of saying is in, uh, let's do is of. Um, and so we have to say if the block is basically touching, and then we can say uh, blocks dot, and then let's change this to simply stone. Awesome. So now we have a block that if it touches, if it touches stone, it is going to soak it up and turn into a magma block. Let's change this. Uh, let's say uh, in uh, infested stone bricks, just because. And then also just to show you the functionality here, let us uh, let's say uh, diamond block just just to, just for show. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, put this in the world. Let's touch it uh, against some stone and uh, figure it out. So now that we've actually made this though, we're gonna have to call this uh, ore sponge. Even though technically this is just a block sponge and it's gonna be placing diamonds instead of air. So let's restart our our little thing. Make sure that you make the block all the way on the side completely, and then everything should be good from there. All right, here we are in the nether, right where we left off in the last video. So let's do the slash fill nether uh, p. And then here we are inside of um, in, psh, conveniently a cave. So we can now grab our block absorber and kablooey, it didn't do anything. Oh my gosh. <sighs> you totally thought it was going to place a bunch of diamonds, didn't you? Gotcha. All right, let's uh, let's see let's see what we did wrong and let's see how we can fix it. So we basically said get fluid state, get block state, and we want it to uh, basically absorb stone. That part is correct, but what went wrong if that was basically correct? Well, normally if you're ever changing a fluid into a block, this this is completely correct. It's just that in the else statement. There is more to it than what we expected. And we're saying block instance of a fluid drainable, set it to true. Well, our first problem here is the fact that this instance of fluid drainable just isn't true. So we want our block basically to just say if it is not equal to null. And null just simply means uh, nothing. <laughs> and so now it says, hey, 
this fluid drainable? All right, a good way to just avoid this is to just take our little block out here, control C, and we're just gonna take the if statement and put it out there, boom. So now if the block is not nothing, meaning the block simply exists, it's something, it has to be some, some, some sort of object, now it should be fine, right? And now let's see if there's anything else that's remotely related to a fluid and see what possibly do we need to do with it. So best way to make sure you're not forgetting anything, just type in the word fluid and says, hey, there's two instances. If the top one is up here where it says fluid, to, uh, that's sometimes you'll have be left with an import. An import will tell you that something is missing. Sometimes imports don't update. So a best way is to get rid of the semicolon, put the semicolon back, and then if it, it'll, it'll update the one that you're trying to get rid of. But this is the only type of block that we have here. So what do we do with this? We are just going to take this and we are just going to do the same thing we did with the other one. We're just going to take it out of the if statement because we don't care if it's a fluid or not. It's, it's, it's a block. Everything is a block. Fluids are a type of block, so they can only mess certainly with particular other fluids. So it's like a block with extra functions. But since a block is talking about everything, just take it out of the fluid and it'll cover everything. So now we have basically our two little statements out here where it's going to turn it into the infested blocks and this is going to be a diamond block. So let's restart the world and see how it goes. Let's uh, slash, uh, well, let's do time set day because I just like it to be day. And then let's do slash locate and then let's look a biome and let's look at the stony peaks. Usually they have, uh, they're like little mountains with stone on top of them. So that's basically what I want to look for. And then we're gonna scroll all the way to the top again. And we're gonna look for the highest point on this mountain. And this is where we're gonna wanna put it. Slap. And oh my. Well, this didn't do exactly what I thought it was going to do. Um, but it definitely did uh, something. It basically took all of the stone and has transformed it into diamond blocks. And let me tell you, um, I like that idea. The idea that I was thinking, and the reason it didn't work, was because I basically said, if it's stone, turn into diamond blocks. And I was thinking, I was thinking if it was, it was going to do the airspace too, but I didn't s tell the sponge to soak up air. And I mean, I guess you could do that, but, uh, you know, I, I think this is a much funnier result. If you want to set, if you want to set it to air, you can, I guess, but, um, I feel like that's going to cause more, uh, issues than, uh, solutions, but, in the meantime, let's take a look at our little diamond mountain, and we'll notice that it only took up um, basically just stone. I'm surprised it left this one here. Oh, because it couldn't reach it because of the coal hole. Um, so now let's have it soak up other ores, or basically let's make it soak up a more than one type of block. That way we can include the ores. So now we're having it saying, let's soak up some stone, and then we can basically say, and... Control C, Control V, and then uh, let's also because we're just doing some experiments, let's just do uh, let's make this a smaller a smaller sponge, uh, 600, 6,500, perfectly fine. So instead of blocks dot stone, let's also make it do uh, let's say uh, oops uh, coal coal ore, and then let's also have it do uh, you can either choose to put the end at the beginning of their end. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna include the end. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit control D a couple times. Um, this is just a way to just get a bunch of them. So we're gonna be doing, well, let's do coal, iron ore, uh, let's say gold ore. All right, so this should be all of the major ores. Uh, if you don't wanna include the deep slate, don't include the deep slate. I just decided to insert all of them. And so now our thing should completely just soak up basically all of the major ores. And now uh, we want it to um, we want it to do basically what the sponge does does. So let's look at our super sucker, which is basically the same thing as the uh, the thing there, the previous. And remember how we were like as the block state all this to false. Uh, oh wait, I got rid of it from here too. All right, well let's look up our sponge block again. 
And let's take a look, because we want basically yeah, where it says is kelp, and we want to take these two lines with the block entity, because this we wanted to drop the stacks. So let's uh, let's copy this, and then uh, go back to our ore sponge, and right where it says the block is null, uh, before we basically set it to all that, and then it says what's the block state. Uh, this is simply the world block state get current position. So we're going to control C, control V. Control V, and suddenly that should be all fine. And then we're saying, hey, eh, we're just gonna leave it like this. All right, so let's uh, let's turn uh, let's turn this black back into um, air. Uh, that way it goes back to its sponge function, and and uh, we are now gonna be soaking up basically stone and all the ores. And then we made it so that it's going to drop the stacks if the block is not equal to null. So let's see what it looks like now. And basically this should be a fully functioning uh, block sponge. You can set how many blocks specifically you want it to absorb. And then you can also say what exactly you want it to turn into. So uh, now that we're back in the world here, let's go over to this one over here. And uh, here's, some, here's some ore stuff. So let's uh, take this and holy guacamole, that is a lot of item entities. And uh, it's loaded, and what caused all those item entities was, uh, yeah, there's a reason I to purposely made it this small. And you can see that now my game is functioning. We can see that it dropped the, the iron, it dropped the coal, but it dropped all this cobblestone. So let's say I want to get rid of the cobblestone, because that is causing an immense amount of lag. Uh, um, Yeah, we don't like that. This is actually a really simple fix, too. So basically, if the block is equal to something, and that something is not, uh, let's say the block, uh, let's do world dot get block state cur cur <laughs> current position uh, dot is of, and then we'll say blocks dot stone, and adding this is simply just going to make it not drop the stacks if it is stone. Now we have basically a lag-free ore sponge, and it will completely absorb all of this. Oh, oh, wait, 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 big idea, big idea. Totally didn't even think about this. Let's also do uh, deep slate, and then, uh, so it's going to absorb uh, the deep slate as well. And then we can also say, and uh, if the world's, we're just going to copy this, control C. Uh, it's funny, I just thought of it right at this moment to do this, uh, deep slate, uh, which is funny because I totally said <laughs> absorb all the deep slate ores because I also remember that deep slate ores exist. So now we have basically, I mean, this should generally be it. This should be completely done at this point. We now have something that should be able to soak up, not cause a bunch of lag. So let's test it out, see how it does, and see if I cause any errors or pain. All right, so let's get rid of all this cobblestone here. So we're just going to do slash kill at e type equals not player and that will just get rid of everything that's not me oh and you should always do it twice because uh each entity that gets killed creepers spiders they all drop their loot tables so it's always good to do it twice really quickly so now let us take our little thing and and uh oh i totally forgot about gravel it probably should get rid of gravel too but you'll notice that basically four of uh for when it comes to ores it drops all that experience it drops some of the iron it ch changed that into the infested deep slate uh let's just kind of keep going deeper for a moment so it's going to take us down oh yeah and i told it not told it not to get rid of this stuff down here which is perfectly fine, I guess, because uh, my thing is I just wanted it to basically just soak up uh, all of the... I just realized that's not stone. <laughs> and then here we are at the deep slate layer. Uh, and you can tell, look at, look, at all the, look at all the ores we're getting. Uh, <laughs> is this survival plausible? Probably not, but hopefully this at least inspires you to be able to make a custom sponge any way you feel and then obviously you can see the capability to have it soak up more than one thing have to drop um basically the loot table of specific blocks uh i can show you how it ignores particular blocks as well as gathers certain ones um there are extra functions that you could totally have this do um 
but and and I think this is the the first series where I did not I did not include explode. So hopefully hopefully you guys are happy about that as well. So imagine if I had it soak up the the bedrock. You can do that, and that is extremely not recommended. Um, but uh, that's that. All right, so I made this now massive. I have added a gravel, sand, red sand. This is because they are gravity blocks, and because I made it so big, I expect this thing to reach the ceiling of the world, which is going to be the dirt and grass block. And then I told it, do not drap, s drop stone, deep slate, gravel, sand, red sand, uh, the dirt, or the grass block. So basically all these things. I said, please don't drop them. So now let's go back into the world and just finish this off. Let's, let's place this, and let's just see how massive massive this thing gets. Huh. 17,273 entities. Yeah, that was causing a, a slight bit of lag. But uh, here we can see that this uh, mountain here is now basically completely decimated as we have uh, used our, our sponge. That's where we started. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, this is uh, definitely uh, really soaked things up. <laughs> I probably should have included the uh, the dripstone. That's perfectly fine. But anyways, if you have any questions, go ahead, ask me. I might be able to get to you. So, um, uh, but uh, so far, thanks, thanks for watching. So, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna wrap it up. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado.